Good evening. So I had a couple of ideas how to deal with this. For one thing, the canvas test is actually not really helping us right now. It's just taking up space. Uh, and then I've got some divided by twos to deal with. <clears throat> I don't know if that's all of them. I have to do this in, well, I'll take the curve diameter. That was like a, that was a centering. Well, that wasn't quite it. So there was one thing left, and that's actually in the visuals. That has to be in like either the view or oh, because I, I did fifty percent. All right, so that just gives us some more space. Clicks still work. All right, so I want to be able to say, okay, what point was that? And there's some danger here of drawing a different point than we're actually viewing. So things we might want, hmm. And apparently the chart stuff has these paths through to the chart parameters. So we have, I mean, I guess they're really like window points. List of point and chart points. Also list of points, but in a different coordinate system. So view has to pass, well, view is going to render window screen points by itself. I guess we might as well start with that. <clears throat> so we have a layout with a row with a whole bunch of stuff in front, which is going to have one more of those. I mean, these should just be plain up screen coordinates. So they shouldn't need any of their model stuff. Well, I guess icons check in with that. How do we do this? Well, it's in front. We're going to need a parent element. We're going to be doing a whole lot of coordinate craziness, so I don't you don't know if it matters if we use an L or a row or what. to do something for every single point.
So for an LMUL, I might, hmm, I might want to actually draw coordinates here. Which is not what LMUI is necessarily good for. Their size. Hmm. So I can move them. But I might like have to do it um, as like an in front thing. If they're in here, they're still going to get positions from their widths and their heights which could mess us up. So this is already an in-front thing. It's like I need to append a list of in-fronts to here. Well, we can, we can, we can try this. Hmm. No, we actually need, hmm. <laughs> I want to mark the point and I want to have, I possibly want to have text. What do I do with you? This would be a background dot color color dot white. Oh, we've, ne we've never had a call for color here before. Let's actually, I guess we're, we're using graphics for everything. the first argument to be a color. Uh, you have element.background as background. Did you, oh, you have your own color system. Okay. Which has no defined colors. Okay, so we have some sort of typo here. Oh, it's window points, not screen points. I keep doing that. So I kind of think of it as screen coordinates, but it's not really a whole screen.
Oh, wait, the replacement. Now we have no points in here. And maybe I'm gonna to wanna to wait some way to like tag them with colors or something. Okay, so the explain might not be helping me here. Okay, so you... Oh, I think move left to move right. So I guess it defaulted to center. I mean, that was zero, zero. Is, that what, is this what I'm looking at here? Yeah. Well, now you you positioned fine. But maybe the extra row elements did something. Okay. The other thing we want, and this is where I, I was wondering, can we position that and then do you uh, string dot from in nah, from float. Can I do this with formatting? Hmm. I don't think Ellen supports a floating point modulus. Can I round to a certain number of significant digits? That's float to int, that's floor, that's ceiling, truncate. We've already got a clamp. Maybe the argument order is different. Huh. Well, I guess some of these do need a couple of decimal places, but these could get really obnoxious.
Of course, we already called it X. Oh, but you make an int. Well. I might actually need another zero here, because we, we had some pretty tiny ones. Uh, right, more parentheses. Answer is always more parentheses. Hmm. That kind of works. But I need to have a separate element for you to move you down a little bit. Mostly down. Or maybe I need to change your alignment. More parentheses. Kinda, yeah. All right, so there's zero, zero, we hope. Maybe we can check out the properties of ones in other places. So Hades, boons, when we get now, it, it's probably, I just have some way to like reset these for a different operation. We just keep appending them. Uh, we had. Did I have like a, oh, like I calculate the screen center? Chart center. So we're calculating this on demand. Uh, right, we, we didn't end up storing this in the model. Window size, window size. Okay, that seems like a reasonable answer. All right, are there any other things I'm dealing with that are, ooh. That would classify as screen points. So window center. Oh, this is on wheel. Uh, 
Uh, okay, what I do, I put a blocking element on it. So I've got some other in front. What did I do? You're just text. Padding. Um, I think it's a full overlay. you have anything? Oh, this is a canvas. I need... I don't think you have anything to deal with this. Set so cursor to a pointer. Hmm. Is this just for... Just for pointer events? Oops. No. Well, although it didn't make this thing transparent. Did I actually catch the reload here? Oh, okay. I don't like this. Oh, you need a bool. I guess that's just for convenience of doing logic stuff. Okay, so that also made... Not only did it make its elements transparent, it didn't solve the pointer problem. <laughs> Alright, second check. Is this actually the problem? Or do we break something else? Yes, this is actually the problem. Okay. Transparent is a lie. Oh, maybe these are only Elm UI events, and I'm actually doing stuff at the SVG layer. And it's not passing them through properly? I don't know. Really? Oh, that's an ID. I did ID, not. Copy an ID, not a class.
NVFR. So now we're back to overriding stuff. Oh, NBFR star. Got to get even more specific. God. Yeah. It worked for this. <laughs> so this says this is the rule. Uh, div class. Excuse me? I appear to have misspelled something here. Well, we've we've already got one of those. Um, okay, yeah, you weren't hitting anything. So what did I do wrong now? It says got class overlay. What? Oh, does something else use overlay? Yes. Oh wait, uh, are you an NBFR? You must be inside an NBFR. That takes care of that, and that takes care of that, okay. Okay, yeah, screen coordinate stays there. That I believe. <laughs> All right, so window center, we got, let's see, so this is on wheel, we landed at a point.
Is this where we think it is? Okay, that's right where we think it is. And we're just... Okay, we're putting these in LMUI without sufficient force to do true overlap. Oh, and it's moving this stuff to... Oh heck, it's moving this. Well, that's not very good. So everything, every single entry must leave some sort of residue there. So that's not gonna work. All right, let's try and keep it somewhat as its own thing. So you're an element. Oh, except that that blocks it every time, but my is my center moving? No, that's my zoom that's changing. So we can't continue using the same spot, but we can see that we're definitely... So these things are now blocking me out. I don't know if they're the same thing. Okay, so we're just accumulating. You can almost see the blur of them all sitting on top of each other. Okay, uh, what do we do? And that's the relative points. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I guess we can actually technically do. Well, no, we might be adding several here. So this is in screen space. It's just, it, but it's going to be a vector. And if we're placing it at its point, it could have negative components, which will be off the screen. Case in point, negative 90.
Okay, window center, relative point. We, we, we got the point there. Does negative 37, 35, that sounds fine for screen coordinates. The, oh, we do this scaling in screen window space. So we scale that back to something tiny up there. So that's already one issue. All right, this is another thing I was thinking about. I'm, I'm doing this, this scale minus one. So in principle, if you're pipelining stuff, you should be doing it that way, I guess. Geometry sub is something a little bit different. And that's kind of actually what we had going here. Because we wanted to sub the other way. Oh, it's actually the module name. You definitely use geometry. So it's this one. Oh, geometry. Okay, point, rel point, negative, positive, makes sense. That's going to scale us back to, well, that's rel point. So it's actually the vector from here to here. No, and, th and then we're going to scale that delta. Hmm. To get a good on screen of this, it would actually take quite a lot of transformation. It's like we're going to be just a vector rooted at this, displaying that, and then that coordinate space is too small to visualize nicely. We have the vector from here to here. Is that it? Do I actually need the vector from my current offset? Well, that's going to come in soon in a way. Scale that down to our microsystem.
still negative positive. We subtract the offset. which was zero when this started. And the difference, we subtract the offset again, which gets a little weird. Why do we do offset there? Got a point relative to screen center. Well, we want to, we do want to move the screen center closer to this. I'll give you that. In a degenerate case, we just kept on zooming. We'd expect to continually approach the same on chart point. <clears throat> well, I guess we want to be, have that part of the graph not move really. Not so much the center itself should move there, you want to be zooming towards the cursor. So why are we doing screen offset again? Maybe what I actually want is the screen coordinate of the current center. Which we don't have. <clears throat> We have the ability to click through, actually this is a part of the process where we borrowed this from hit detection. Kinda. Oh, and you had this same thing. So that works. Point minus center. Scale by all the things which we actually had actually taken out Zoom, but we were getting weird effects. Then offset by the, so that gets us a vector from this center to that center. Then we subtract the offset. I mean, it worked. Does that make sense though? From center, that wasn't a very negative positive.
Does it even make sense to add offsets there? But this was working. That's also working, even though we're offset. Oh, I guess I hadn't reloaded yet. OK. Oh. Build. I wonder if I've already got some sort of like signing version here that's making that work. And I definitely need a difference between these two things somewhere. There's, there might be this, the question of which direction we go. Like, if we flip this around, does this become, an, does this become something? No. I don't know what that becomes. Okay, well that looks like exactly backwards. Well, we're throwing a flip in there. Okay, well, that wasn't ready. It's a negative positive. Negative positive, so that's still kind of in screen screen coordinates. Uh, I don't have a good way to see what my offset is, do I? Oh, no, I had it up there. So negative 37, 28. Now, if that's in the internal coordinate system, this doesn't even make sense. Offset equals center. Wait, does that mean those things are flipped too? Boon chart, oh, maybe you're flipping stuff out. God, array dot get, maybe dot map center. Uh, 
We don't necessarily have a god here. Uh, we have a target, though. Zero plus twenty plus two eight. Oh, this is always the same because you we've rotated it to put it there. But that's positive. We're passing that through as the offset to which we jump, and that works. Although that got a little screwy, but that's, that's our zoom issues. Negative 140 plus 167. Scaling negative positive. From center, okay, so now that's negative. Although that's our offset, which is like off the bottom of the screen. Oh, from, is that the center of the graph or the center of the screen? That does feel like that it could almost be the uh, offset, like, doubling as we go. It really starts to zoom off the edge there. Moonshark gets offset. So that's like that's like an automatic point we can draw, although it should be here. I don't know we're using offset to transform our, our coordinates. So we've got model.offset to shift the whole thing. So effectively we'd be just drawing a zero zero. So that was the master outline. So I haven't shifted you, which basically means you're at zero. Okay, so uh, maybe we should make you a different color. Yeah, so I mean that's that's kind of free. Ooh, did I leave this in a broken state? Oh, I left this in a very broken state. What did I do?
Oh boy. I guess I had to undo there. No, that's zero, zero. Hmm. Which ends up getting transformed by offset. Oh, so maybe... Offset negative positive. Okay, so this is the y axis thing. You've been flipping this internally. This is basically flip, we didn't count it. So we had to flip that there. So we record the things here. No, SVG. What is it? Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, so that is positive Y. How is this working at all? Well, okay, so steps in here, we take steps to flip it, that's why. Yes, that we're really only do it there. Which is where we are. Model at offset was there, and then we go through all these transforms. But this is supposed to kind of be in this this unit space now. So we shouldn't be flipping it there. Chart center, point minus. So something has to flip here. Uh. 
and then when we drag, start subpoint scale. Ooh. <laughs> That's already affected some of the ways we math stuff. Okay, yeah, so moving down would in fact be negative. No, okay, so it's not that. No, it's not quite it either. And this is just size, so it shouldn't care about our relative position. Where else are we dealing with that kind of stuff? Wait, is this? Okay, so that put us off from there a little bit. That gets us a lot closer. Offset was zero. So why are we tweaking things here? Maybe it's where we flip again. Okay, model dot offset. So this shift must be in screen coordinates. Well, that's an altogether interesting direction to go. Okay, well that's kind of like completely the opposite direction. So now it's kind of in the bottom corner. All right, so center is still there. Uh, oh, actually, my, my screen center is a little bit different. Where would where we calculate that? View.chart center. Because that used to be like 255. 
Okay, minus 40 plus 40 divided by 2. So I was looking at this as... Maybe the way you think about this is different from, from offsetting this. So if that offset was... Maybe that was correct. Cause that's in, yeah, that's in screen coordinates. So that feels about right. But the farther down that goes, the further up that goes. Or does it? Okay, well, that's too much. Yeah, they get closer, but not completely close. So that calculation still stands. How we use it might have to be different. Oh, are we passing a screen space center in here? Okay, so this is our coordinate system, our coordinate system. We're scaling that out. Nope, that's too much. <laughs> I mean, that seems like that would just have, well, it's, it's my, my offset zero. So that doesn't matter. Yeah, but like, where is this number coming from? Yeah, that's completely arbitrary. So this definitely came from the flipping. Zoom is one. I'd have to add a whole extra layer to this to like do points that were like in pure outside coordinate chart space. Okay, so that puts you up there. Okay, 
I can see this is being left aligned. And over to the center. I'm not quite sure where that part of it comes from. If we think of this as just the, the center coordinate going to you, Okay, so that's that's understandable. That is, we're back in our upper corner. Which explains the over this way a little bit. <clears throat> so the x-coordinate was straight up understandable. That did what you expect. Actually, this is zero, 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 zero. So yeah, we're just not moving it right now. So the point of this Oh, you're also in screen space. Okay. So the SVG library is also positive down. So why was I flipping things? Maybe my coordinates were, I was programming things flipped and I had to tweak it. So that's there. Well, add negative. So it was here. We went boop, boop. It's up. You know that, yeah, that's that's up. Okay. That sets that to there, and then we want to go down and over, which might be flip center. I guess we, we could think of this as flip 0.5, 0.5. Okay, within approximation of how we're placing things, that looks pretty well aligned. This even works. Doesn't fix that yet. We have any points we can work with here? Uh, we, hmm. Model lot center is in screen space coordinates, and this entire thing is going to get modified by that, so it's kind of hard to display that. Model dot offset is just the same. Well, it's not the same point. We've got this whole thing in this group. Oh, this is a singleton. I guess I could try adding things to the list. Well, we're still gonna be, be shifting and grouping and scaling this.
Huh. Okay. So from this thing drawing here. So I guess we said to draw it at a certain size. within the box of that circle. And we had to realign that to zero to push out our actual center. Oh. Well, that circle shift, which was just this thing. All right, roll point, negative, positive. Scaling, negative, positive from center. Negative, positive. If that's an actual in coordinate, that should be negative now. Real point scaling, or doing a simple minus. If we took point, we took there's a difference in, in window space. No, oh. is okay, that still works. Or does it? Hmm. Okay, those are fine. Feels like the position might be slightly off. Hmm. Or we've got that mostly right. And maybe that could be a zoom thing. So this goes from the offset, well, it's by the offset and the center. So we go the other way, we go from a point, add minus, scale, scale, minus add. Well, there's offset and, hmm. That says we should be doing something with this. Although this, that's supposed to be from center. Also, we flipped. Yeah, I flipped this at the final stage. Right, well, that definitely had more dramatic effect. <clears throat> but we didn't do that. Oops. Here. Point minus...
center offset hit. Okay, so part of it is that this is just where things are getting drawn. So if we get drawn from zero, we go from zero to one, zero to two. Even though I'm thinking of it as zero at the center. And we need to do that to line these things up. Hey Liger, I wonder if I need to get back to the testing side of things, figure out transforms to and transforms from. Because then you can say it's right or, right or it's wrong. That's gonna be, let's see, we've got model diameter, we've got model zoom. <clears throat> If that's an independent testable function, it's going to have to get like all of that, a whole lot of parameters to not be dependent on the entire app. Now we could probably be compressing these down to, well, I guess you have to, you have to invert them, but if they were combined, they'd still be the same. That could be a single zoom factor. You have a center point in window coordinates. Well, this is, this is, hmm, this is kind of in the middle of the, pro well, I guess it's offset plus this and then continue. Or we look at this as this point plus the offset and blah, 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 blah. It's a different way to look at it since the going the other way we're doing things with offset to get back to a point. This point just happens to be, you could think of it as the upper corner. Or some representation of the center. Okay, so that still ends up there. That puts us in terms of an offset, a center, and a zoom factor. I've considered that having a screen coordinate center would be similar. Well, in the sense that you would move around the screen space thing, and then everything that drawing would be responsible for kind of putting putting it zero there. That would probably be easier on the drag side. In fact, that's that's kind of how it used to work. But somewhere I end, ended up with the SVG size being a factor in some of my calculations. And that didn't work for Canvas.
okay, the canvas, we started messing with this, and, and then I think, yeah, just canvas view. We hadn't really done any coordinate stuff yet. We were starting to understand there were issues there. And then this is technically all coordinate stuff is in this. So this might be a, a throw it away scenario. Well, there's a few things we're gonna have to re readdress. Uh, did I end up dropping that chart size? Local uncommitted changes. So we did do a few changes to that. Uh, we were, wor were working on working that, that factor out. Where's that flip? I guess it was in screen coordinates. That'd be reasonable to do there. Okay, so we took the chart size out of there. We had the minus, we had, okay, well that's, that was debugging stuff. Chart diameter might be a, th might be a thing, part of that. It's kind of some, that's kind of some of the stuff we want to redo or undo. If we thought of our center as a screen coordinate, because we kind of had that working. It's a little bit bothers me that we have both our screen center, which, oops. And I guess that's going to be a thing as, as we, when we, when we deal with resizing. or interactive resizing. And then this is a virtual space position relative to that. So I don't know that th these aren't necessarily bad things. But I'm wondering if I could take more more measured steps here. Uh, so you need to rebuild. All right, we were in the split mode. We want to take that out while we figured out this mess. Oh, and then we've got a couple of, well, we'll be back, be back to you later. That's something else. All right, we don't uh, abstracted some of that stuff yet. I know that's that's a half. 
So that was the only place that had shown up at this point. Oh, and view, view, view. Okay, we had started printing this. I was like, oh, that's screen space. Two ninety four forty eight. Oh, that is offset from here. Well, that might actually be not too useful going forward. Well, it's probably possibly useful uh, for this thing. But that might actually explain a little bit of stuff. So that's the offset from there. So do I need to do my points again? Because like, if I start printing offset, which is now it's a screen, that'll make that really obvious what that is. Although it was that, and it was a point they touched, which wasn't that big a deal. So maybe we start by just printing that point. So I didn't actually throw all that out. Actually, we, we know that this system can do a degree of screen translation. So it might also be interesting. Well, I still have to, I'd have to actually extract it to be to a testable module if I want to do that. There's that problem. So pick something. Oh, then we've got all the overlay issues. Maybe you don't need width height fill if it's just an offset. Right, and we did your actual content is nothing. But that is an in front thing. We don't have this function yet. And why don't we can we bust it out there? So we have to have some element. We want to be able to contain, we want to have a square and we want to have text. So pick one again. So actually are you, well you're placed at this spot, right?
And then we have the whole, how do we print a number thing? And temp this in. Ah, yes, you have two picks. This needs more parentheses. Right. Compose functions. And we don't call you yet. Okay, whatever we're doing, it's not working very well. I think we did that before. Okay, now we've blocked ourselves out. Got that part done. Oh, do I need to, no, I need to move right. Actually, this two float isn't doing, well, I, I guess we, we're, we're only able to do, since we're, since we're grounded in integer coordinates here, there's only so much we can do right now. All right, so that is confirming where our origin is. Which in and of itself, I guess, is okay, but somewhere we've got that. Uh, so it was chart size, which you are just passing down. And we're using all over the place. All right, we can get rid of that as a parameter. And this was, oh, this is actually the right one. So this goes back to here. Uh, we passed it down to there. I think we actually washed this out in our other pass. Maybe because of things I was doing to zoom. So we're only using this to text for appearance. which is gonna require some adjustments. 
I think we saw that we got got rid of this. Okay, so we have a scale in there. All right, da -da -da -da. size, lose you, view. I uh, can't delete that. All right, we could get out of there. Well, this is the dependencies. Now, I know when I worked on this before, it felt like I ended up doing a bunch of useless scaling. Because we scaled by chart size. Oh, you know what? The divided by chart size was something that we had done as we were trying to wash this out. And it's like, oh, it just disappears. Right, because this isn't considering window size at all. Well, I'm setting my zoom by it a little bit. But I don't think that the scales actually matter because of the way the library works. Okay, well, there, there's some funny coordinates, so. So what do we do? We took a value. We blew it up. We truncated it into a integer and then We did that and put it back to where it was, and then we did string from float. Oh, last year is three three significant places. Okay. I, mean, I almost don't even need two places for coordinates here. Oh, huh, did I not? Okay, and my zoom is probably pretty similar. Okay, that's sufficient for our needs. All right, also lights out time. Huh, so it felt like this thing had washed out more by the time we were done. Although that had then created some of our other issues. Okay, so we eventually don't want this here, but we've got it all over the place here. Now, why is that a factor in this? 
because I thought we had done these two abstract coordinates. Is that still the case in this? Wait, what was I? Well, that was part of my process. While I was printing this stuff out. Okay, so that's giving me a coordinate up there. That was center. If we look at the focus thing, that should tell us what we're focusing on. So we got a point that we focus on. Rotation. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had some rotation there. Oh, that was a little bit left over. That should be going through focus view, though. Okay, so there's center. Yeah, so those are in that unit coordinate system. I mean, after transformation. Well, the gods are. But the gods are one of the things we're hit detecting on. So, I mean, if that works, those should all be, we're doing hit detection on their ring to see if they're there. And there's that scale by chart size again. Right, part, but, but this also involved a rework of how Zoom worked. Because that, the, what, what is 1.0 Zoom is largely defined by like when these things start to become natural size, or was at one point. Yep, yeah, there's the blur. So there's probably some good work to be redone in terms of thinking in terms in terms of like chart diameter. And then that becomes like diameter and zoom instead of chart size and zoom. And chart size will probably be different by diameter by about this factor. In fact, that, that sounds about right because it's probably gonna be like a 400 and that's a tenth of a tenth of our 4K. So we're I think that ended up, that fell out of some of this stuff. Diameter, which this, this is like a factor of diameter, so it's like one or this is some smaller piece. And so I guess thinking of that, I could even put in like model or just view dot, view dot diameter. And then the, our zoom would get rescaled to that, but there are places where we use zoom and that causes a bit of scale craziness.
All right, can we? So operations in here currently work. You take an entire model, which is a bit inconvenient. Do you currently depend on any loaded data? Uh, XHR. No, I don't think so. so. I might be able to load this up into a test framework and use a full size model. Since that's one of the arguments to this and we're doing, this is a pure model change. Although the main output is probably, probably the offset. Uh, hit boon is model point we don't I don't, I don't have the direct um, internal rescaling here We might be able to test a few things. Although I guess getting co mm, yeah getting coordinates for a full scale test can be a little bit of pain. I'm essentially going to have to like dump out some like window size, window width, and then some test coordinates which some of these things would actually be it's like things might end up moving a little bit and it would be okay and maybe maybe we start with testing what we've got <clears throat> and I'm going to need to extract a a coordinate translation here to get useful input output results. What are we using from you? Offset zoom. Oh, well, the entire chart metrics. Well, that's, that's the hit part. I think that's less important once we get the translation right. All right, test. So you're gonna be a little bit, well, we, we need these. We need some basic setup. So forward might only, does it forward only happen in the view? So we've got hit. I guess zoom is also a thing we 
might be no, I might have to extract a function for that. All right, how much trouble is it going to be to construct a model here? Well, we've got an init function, which has zero arguments, but we cannot create a navigation key. That's the entire point of it. And because that's in our model, even though we're not using it right now, we cannot construct a model. We've only got something called navigation. Or is it values that we can't can't create? You only get access to a key when you create your program. Or, you know, test their software. <sighs> Do I ever use this? And... So I would have to redo my model as a parameterized thing that could either have a navigation key or not have a navigation key or at least be parameterized by a navigation key so that we can have a, an everywhere I mentioned model, I'm gonna to have to put that in. Well, maybe I can make model a model model, a alias for with navigation key. And then like almost every method or any function could just be a model of don't care. That's like a really big change to do that, though. So maybe it's not a maybe it's not a test suite. <laughs> maybe we just run some stuff. All right, so this is of course that might be actually doing stuff in in here. But that doesn't lock down our window size. Ugh. So the part we're really interested in here is the coordinate translation. The, um, whether there's something there, if we get the point right, it should be okay. So 
So you are you should be a screen space point or window space point. Where are we going the other way? Well, and some of the zoom stuff and such, maybe. So that translation would only depend on something that had. Well, then there's that chart size. Something that had a zoom and an offset. Is there a convenient place to put that? Could I redo just these functions? Well, I'd have to have like a... a model that represented that stuff, and there are there gonna be some other things. Well, it's gonna be the things that touch this right now, right? So window width, window height. You calculated new zoom from first principles. I should use the model one. And okay, focus view used it twice. Hit boon. So you were the problem child, children. You're actually updating the model and you're doing several things. Well, you're doing rotation offset zoom. based on parameters. So that could be some sort of, if we had a thing that was like, well, it's got a window width, it's got a window height, it's got a rotation offset zoom. Beyond that, we don't care. Would we be able to do that? Uh, is a record with Uh, oh, a, a viewable of R. With a rotation. A offset of a point and a zoom of a float. Could you then be okay? But now it has to have a chart metrics for this for the it, this entire thing, which we can actually say about viewable. But this is not the interesting part right now. So this we really want to pull out like screen the chart which takes us up to here, or just another kind of point. And you are a viewable
car. So if we made that exposed and this exposed, which I think it yes, just default exposed everything. <clears throat> then we could test these two functions at least, and maybe we could pull out some things. I'm also wondering if I should make this like a a module for some of this kind of stuff. Uh, we've got our wheel operation, which a point in a scroll direction. Maybe make it a point in a <clears throat> in a tweak value. Zoom offset. The other thing is drag, which that almost felt like it should maybe be a module. And you don't even have a model. You might need an extra argument, but you were just updating the offset. Uh, the challenge with this is that focus is updating a whole bunch of things at once. Now, rotation is actually just a pass through. Zoom, we do kind of use here. Do we use anything? I guess we're using our sub window things here. I don't remember. If the other form we had this in, had a reuse pattern like this. So yeah, this was our um, diameter calculation. Which, I mean, with some of these offsets and things, that I could actually see moving into view. Jojemba. Glad you like watching me bang my hand against the wall. That could originally move back to regular old view. That involves a bunch of stuff there, and Right now we're calling into view for chart size, which we want to get rid of. Right, but I wanted to try and get the stuff under test before we <clears throat> before we start changing everything a lot. So for the time being, I think we need to take what we got. Is there, do we actually save anything here? No, we didn't. So we're going to have screen to chart, and then we're having something else. We'll have the uh, focus is the is the kind of the exposed things, and maybe we can deal with some drag and drag and zoom stuff too. So screen to chart. We can, <clears throat> for this thing, actually this can be basically be a viewable of nothing. It is going to be a little bit too, uh, 
Well, what do we what do we care about in this in this setup? I could probably use a static window width window height for this. Rotation we don't care about. So the only things we're going to really care about is offset and zoom for various examples. I don't know, something easy. Although we're taking like 80 off of something, so. Maybe it should be a little bit bigger. Maybe we need to grab some stuff from the application to be able to test things, but. So we want to test, well, I guess an obvious thing would be to test, test zero. <clears throat> so we've got Hades, oh, uh, hmm, I'm not sure I'm going to need to mention viewable very often, I don't think. Screen to chart, given some kind of model, zero, zero, one. Now, this is not actually what like our default position would be here. So that's our offset. And a test point. This might be a case where we just see what it returns and do a characterization. Because we haven't actually done a like a focus or anything on this. Yeah, we're not running tests. Ooh. Okay, we've we've broken some other stuff in the meantime. So we dropped our point variant from DXF decode. Oh, probably re probably renamed these to like point entity. No, I want start of capital point. And of course we tested a bunch of them. Hmm. There's gotta be a way to go to character after a word, but I don't remember what it is. All right, well this is getting ridiculous. Hmm. We do want whole word only. And DXF parser test. Okay. And that does in fact go to zero, zero. So 
So if we were to focus this thing, where would it go? Focus view, given a center, a diameter, rotation, which is a pass through. But this returns a new instance of our model, which is, well, as long as we do that as a pass through, window width height aren't gonna change. So I guess I can, I can continue this constructor to say what we expect. Is origin right? No, this is just gonna be I don't know, kind of default for this thing. And given our, the thing we're focusing on in chart space, which I guess zero, zero is a reasonable thing. Focus on center, so yeah, default view. Given a diameter, which is in chart space, a rotation, which we leave alone. We have our model. And I don't think it's actually gonna be this, but it should tell us what, what this all mashes out to. Test the framework. Okay, we're not testing this. <laughs> um, I put, it's in source. Must have been same directory. Ugh. Okay, uh, I probably don't even mention these types too often. Uh, you defined a local type, didn't you? Our local point. Okay, no, we didn't. Okay, so this, okay, so this currently by characterization works out to you. Oh, and a different, um, oh, no, Ew, a very, very ugly zoom factor, a very, very small zoom factor, because we picked a small window. Maybe I should pick a more realistic window? going to change everything again. 0.5, man, I'm like, well, this is like a 500 by something window. Okay, so that characterizes you. All right, so now we have to do
So we do this to get that. And unfortunately, screen two doesn't have a convenient order for, th for threading this through. Uh, all right, so viewable is a setup function for this. Uh, how about a focused, which takes a viewable offset zoom, runs that through, focus view, in a default config. Wait, this is parameters. Actually, both of these get, both of these get wiped out if we focus. So we don't even care. All right, so change around you. So focused, if we click on, ugh, that's the upper corner. Will that still be zero? That doesn't make sense actually. I oh, still, still got some debugging. Huh. So that's not unreasonable. Well, negative four, eight. And I almost expect that to be up more on the Y. But man, these floating point numbers. So we would know, what would, what would we know? We wouldn't really know where the center of the chart was. Do we even have a way to do that? I mean, focus works from zero to a uh, screen location. I don't think I currently have a thing to do to do that though. Uh, we should probably be testing some of the, some of the things around this. So these are screen coordinates. Well, we know what our screen size is. So we know, well, the center is not gonna be the center center because of the bars and things.
Oh. Uh, screen center. Oops. Let's see. Four, one, four, five, nine. Is that sufficient? I guess we could do our other corner. Hmm. Should I do something? I want to do, do some other points as well, just to kind of get the XY flip stuff sorted out. Make sure we're covering that. Now, if we start messing with math, I can see these being off by epsilons. I don't think I'm going to have an easy way to do that. Even if the test framework has something for that, it's not going to do it with points. I guess I could make a point with an epsilon type thing. Yeah, within, not within. Well, I guess I should get that kind of sorted before we start changing things. So we're gonna have, let's see, expect.equal. doesn't have a expected order although the way we're doing it it's going to be equal expected actual so we're going to have equal points now these are expectations How do I combine expectations? Okay, so that's all tolerance stuff. Okay, expect.pass, expect.fail. That's result. How do I combine expectations? How do I test expectations? You see, it's an opaque type, so I don't know if I can. I 
Ah, expect dot all. Okay. Uh, what's our floating point? The second and third arguments are equal within a tolerance specified by the first argument. This is logical or between the absolute and relative tolerance. If you want logical and, Oh, if you have absolute and relative, okay. Okay, I've set this down here. It's 3.14 within 0 0.1 of pi. For a circle comfort, circle comfort system is close enough. Oh, this is the percentage of the thing itself. Well, we're going to be dealing with Screen coordinates and zero one coordinates. So we're gonna have a little bit of range, not a huge range, but a little bit of range. So maybe this is a an either. Oh, but you get two tolerances. Uh. Well, I'm really only concerned about like floating point in precision. So I could probably just do a couple decimal places and be okay. This is going to, oh, this is going to give me a way less useful error message, isn't it? It's just going to tell me it floats out of range. No, this, this is wrong. This is AX and EY and AY. Okay. Oh, this is a... A single number has to pass everything. There is no way to combine expectations. Well, I guess we just have to deal with the in, with with the floating point in precision then. It's, it's not expressible. Well, I could do my own floating point comparison. That's not an expectation. And like, run it through a pass fail. But I don't know if I can get the nice value is not equal to value. print I mean I guess I could then run an expect dot equal in the fail case because we know it'll fail and it'll show you exactly how it's different
I mean, I almost want to say we do something like to scope this down. I don't need parentheses, do I? And then E Y A Y Uh, let's see, so these have to be different by epsilon. Okay, and then we get get that. So that's a projection from a little bit, from all, from small amounts of noise. Oh, but we didn't actually. Except I didn't actually check the noise resi resistance. So like this thing, we already know has no noise resistance. Although that could actually be beyond precision right there. Oh, but that's not gonna be noise. Okay, and then if we do equal points, Now you're equal models with embedded points, so that gets a little bit hairier. Okay. What do we want to start doing to you? We wanted to start looking at extracting like the diameter parameter and a rebasing zoom and that might start having some effect on things like it's actually going to change the zoom values that this calculates for starters and that will have its own little ripple effects And that in turn actually changes how we draw things.
So what is, is there an easy corollary to this that we could test directly? Well, there's sub window width. There's that diameter. There's the scale, the base scale is based on the size, is based on the chart size. Yeah, I don't know if this factor has a direct corollary. Because we are going to be changing changing what a zoom of x means. Hmm. I could try to change the meaning of zoom within what we've got now, although it's not going to be by an exact factor. So I could get something that's close to that and then try to rescale everything with the current code around that understanding of zoom. And then if things change after that, it's because we've something else we've done. It's like right now in this exact window, which might not be the exact window we have next time. Uh, well, it's point, we got point 0.11 and a bunch of decimals. <laughs> Whereas fitting that within, oh, and is this actually relevant relative to, yes, yeah, so we actually get a different zoom value here. So that is a change in how it's presented. So right, yeah, because this was based on like a, a viewable pixel size. And this is why we're rewriting. We're kind of looking at re-engineering to where this is just zoom in whatever whatever view we've got. Huh. I guess leaflet is sort of based on that. Your top level image is one to one. And that zoom one, you have like zoom two, three, four levels are just excessively larger images. But at some level, it's based on pixels, not on filling a space. And that's one of the reasons that we had difficulty with the changing size of these things. Because we the zoom itself no longer said anything about how big it was.
let's see. So the diameter we want to draw at would be a constant thing. Somehow derived from all this stuff. Let's see. Yeah, that's this. And then these numbers down there are for center calculations. I see, probably, probably got some of the same factors. Okay, so you want to get rid of that. Uh, oh no, your parameters were just height and or just width and height, aren't you? All right, so we want to drop that. Oh, I think this calculates the master diameter of whatever, effectively whatever we're focusing on. So that's gonna be one. It's not a scale, that's just a an available space. So I think I had just worked this in a little bit. Uh, so we had our, to our, in our input width and height, and we did like, display width. You are not under test right now, and nor do I have, I guess I could probably bring in view for a test. But this is a new function, so we don't necessarily have answers for what that should be. And I guess we'd set up a test for it in case we'd start tweaking things. And uh, then when we do this, Four seventy two. 
seems like a reasonable answer. That takes care of some of that stuff. All right, so that should walk, knock out that. We have, that doesn't, that doesn't change this thing. It does, it, it does impact our zoom. So that's effectively this number. Oh, we were choosing min before, but that was after a division. Hmm. Well, 472 would have been even wider if it had picked that one, so that seems fine. So the zoom gets larger if this thing is smaller. Oh, or this is still using you. Okay, now this does impact us. And we do. Okay, so we rebased our zoom. I don't want that as an answer. What were we using to bring that back? Well, okay, so for the coordinates, we were trying to get rid of this. That actually brings our center exactly back. Do, no, our center is, well, it's correct with all of that stuff. A factor of 244. Let's see, so this is window height 300. That feels like the shrunken part of that stuff. We think we want that to be a, well, we're looking at that being relative size, which would make that just one. And then how do we translate that back to, because this is pixel offset. Is that times diameter? I see zoom is divided by diameter, which is our input scale factor. Uh, 
Is that just the zoom? It's one if it's there. It is no, it's a it is flipped. We're, oh, we're only testing diameters of one right now. Ooh. All right, so why is this? Ah, we change zoom. Okay, so that was focused. Yeah. Well, this isn't too bad, actually. Uh, I don't know what the exact factor of a zoom zone is. I don't think we're, I don't know if we're printing anything else out right now. No, we're not. All right, so focus view. I guess I don't care about the rotation. Actually, yeah, we've basically got this stuff in here. Uh, it was something like 0.28. Zoom factor, I don't know, something like that. And now we've got very complicated numbers. So the zoom, I think, will actually change because we are kind of moving things. But this gives us a baseline. Oop. Nope. Oh, I guess that's also copy there. All right, so that's a focus. Uh, oh, you know what? I did, I did lower right. I never did something that more differentiated left and right, which we would expect this. Just do that, right? Okay, because it's more separating horizontal and vertical. It is Boons. All right, so at the moment, you're still using these things. Although we could inline that pretty easy. Is that another thing where we just do view center? Well, one step at a time, okay.
Oh, we, uh, what was our, our answer was not exactly the same thing as we put in. Our answer was 0 0.13, the other 0.05. It's a larger zoom. Well, this is gonna be an entirely different zoom paradigm. Wait. Oh, because those were based on focused results. Yeah. Uh, did I get okay results if I took that out? Uh, failed six. When we did chart diameter, no, it still failed six. <laughs> oh, but the coordinates are the same. Okay, so that's a two. I would call that, okay, That's that could be zoomed in. That one, zoom equals one. Offsets, very different. And that's basically our epsilon which we don't get on the model comparisons. But we're still failing six because of zoom. Now you're comparing points. Right, because this thing is still using chart size and a different zoom paradigm. Huh. This wants to put this virtual coordinate at the center of the screen. Could I treat this little bit as a virtual to screen coordinate? And then I've got a two way transform that I can like test for bidirectionality on? Oh, I didn't really test zoom on the other thing, did I? Does it care about zoom? Yeah, it kind of cares about zoom, doesn't it? Although we're going to change what zoom means. Four. 
focused did that get a zoom well these things got zoom values right if we just did basic values yeah so I guess we were indirectly testing that Okay, this does have access to model. Okay, that's down to failed too, so making those equivalent fixes that. Of course, we'd be passing probably different zoom values through there to get the effect we want. <clears throat> so that might, is that actually right then? So that one's done at zoom one. This is after focusing. Which should have given us an alternate zoom. Hmm. Oh, right, because the focus used a different chart size. This, as long as it's one to one. Huh, okay. They are supposed to be inverse operations. And this, the point is only off by epsilon, by floating point precision. The zoom is different. Let's see, zoom one, basically because we've changed our zooming scheme. And just saying our test pass here only does so much, so we have to go change the drawing code to account for that. But that does get rid, is that, is that all instances of chart size? Yes. Let's just deal with all the ramifications of that. Yeah. So this thing is still drawing to this size, but we're focusing to a different size. Uh, SVG. And there's that chart size. So this would be to a, oh, so I put this in view view. We don't have view view. Well, I used to have a size parameter. And didn't I end up with these? I 
I think I ended up with these multiply because it's like, oh yeah, we just we just always do them at the same time. Okay, that's to there, that's to there, but zoom is still its own little thing. Or rather, it's still tuned to the old paradigm, where zoom represented display size to an extent. Okay, uh, well that gets rid of you. So magic number gone. We've got some sizing issues, but panning and zooming still work. Focus view. Oop, oop. But one of the things we did before, even though we don't necessarily need to do it multiple places anymore, uh, all of our, you know, plus 80, plus 40. It'd be nice to have that in the same place. The yonchi.add will stay with the place we took this from. That was using sub window height, which is really just accounting for that. In case we go back to split window. Just copied this. Of course, I guess I didn't. No, I haven't actually changed this yet. Uh, no, Hades Boons. So you are off by zoom and become much simpler. You're off by a whole bunch of things. OK. 
Okay, I guess it's just that's inverse. And they're very, very messy. Okay, you're only off by little bits. One, four, three, oh, eight, six. And two versus four. All right, now we try to flip this. We lean angle. Angel, thanks for the follow. Admittedly, I'm not normally on at this time of night. I'm just hot on a trail of making this less of a mess than it was this morning. There are still some things I might want to change, and well, still some things I have to fix. And this is view dot chart center of model dot window width. I think I might want to cache some of these values in the model, so I don't have to type this out quite so much. Okay, so that is clean. We no longer need that, I think. I don't technically need this as a separate field. Unless I just want to pull all these things out for, because. Zoom, we do use twice, because it's both here and we scale that by. And that was this thing. The slightly harder problem, and this is something I didn't, I perhaps should have done some characterization tests of before, is how we pick the sizes for this stuff. Because we have roughly done a 10x on our zoom. And I know I was getting very, very confused about how we translated this. This used to be like a 0.11, now it's a, but and, and it related to directly to screen size or pixel size. Hey, how's it going? In a very abstract way, I guess. But it had some relationship to actual display size. because we were using it as a zoom value on something that had an intrinsic pixel size. Or we were thinking of that way. It all kind of washed out, and I don't know if that was actually doing any good to think of it that way, <laughs> given the way that it washed out. You get an equivalent effect on this. Well, eh, these I've, I've made abstract operations. These deal only with chart size. And I might have to include some concept of display size well this is the symbol size that 
that's not the font size, which very much we want to depend on how big it is on screen. I could probably do this in constants. If we're just kind of thinking in in zoom terms. My last attempt was a little bit of a brain burner though. So I think I might I, I think I might uh, want to put that off and go to bed. Okay, so actually the transform test was useful. I, the misc was like I was preparing for something and now I forgot what it was. Maybe it's time to clean that up. We did alert our little test display points. That, that, that was kind of the same thing. We just ended up passing a different number in there. We had to wash it out of our fonts and we might have to put that back. Or some some factor of that. We factored out screen to chart and I can almost see chart to screen. Accept the tests. But that gets a checkpoint for any further experiment, so we can just kind of reset out if it doesn't work. All right, that's what I'm normally on. That was bugging me this morning, and I've got at least I've got a kind a mostly working application now. Let me see. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna have a whole lot of code tonight. Well, there's there's one. There's some other graphics programming that might get some of the transform stuff. I don't know if we can be dealing with that. Oh, but you know what? I just did him like the other day. But meanwhile, thanks for watching. Thanks for support from subscribers. If you're looking for someplace cool to hang out, Kenji Coder, I'm not sure what he's working on right now. I think he might be trying to escape life a little bit. He's usually doing some really interesting things. He tends to be doing lower level stuff. Some of it is indeed like graphics and transforms and shaders and, and things. Sometimes it's like programs to do 3D printing. Tends to be more like lower level like C style things from what I've seen. But pretty interesting person. So if you say it's cool to hang out, that's someplace cool to hang out. Thanks for hanging out with me. Good night and until next time.